Age isn't just about how many birthdays you've had. There are many factors that impact how our bodies cope with the demands of everyday life, causing some people to age faster or slower than others born on the same day. As a result, your biological age, the true state of your body, might not align with your chronological age. Biological age can be a better indicator of your health and even your life expectancy. But figuring it out is complicated. Scientists have developed tools called aging clocks that analyze biomarkers, measurable signs in the body that show how we're aging on the inside. They generally work by assessing the amount of uh, decline in aging-related systems in the body. Aging is the biggest risk factor for almost every chronic disease. If we can measure it, then maybe we can slow it down. Instead of treating each disease one by one after people get it, why couldn't we do medicine a completely different way and intervene while people are still young before they have diseases to slow their aging? All of those interventions that aim to slow the pace of aging need to be evaluated. And in order to evaluate them, we need to have a solid measure. And that's what's exciting about the future of Dunedin Pace. Dunedin Pace is an aging clock, but instead of estimating how old your body is, it does something different. It functions more like a speedometer than the other clocks, which function more like odometers. So it doesn't tell you how biologically old or young you are. It tells you how much faster or slower you're aging than the norm of one year of biological change per 12 calendar months. Dunedin Pace, like other aging clocks, reads patterns of DNA methylation, chemical tags that accumulate on our genes as we age. But what makes Dunedin Pace different is its foundation in longitudinal data. So Dunedin Pace is based on the background of the Dunedin study, which is a study of about a thousand people who were born in a small town, Dunedin, New Zealand, in 1972-1973. Scientists tracked those 1,000 individuals over 20 years, measuring how different systems in the body, like cardiovascular health, metabolism, inflammation, and even gum health, changed with age. What's important about the way we did that is that the people are all the same age, and the other important thing is they were all still young. Most other aging clocks are built by comparing young and old people at a single point in time. But that method can mix up aging with disease, miss fast agers who died before they were measured, and confuse health history with actual aging. Dunedin Pace avoids those problems by studying people who not only shared the same age, but also many of the same life experiences. An example of that might be people who were born many, many years ago would have experienced maybe people smoking in the home. So what happens is you don't know what is actually aging or is something that's just related to how old someone is. So Dunedin Pace counters the effects of having generational environmental um, exposures by having everybody born at the same time in the same year. So everybody in the Dunedin study has undergone kind of the same environment. That's what sets Dunedin Pace apart. It isolates true biological aging from everything else. What we were able to do is to get all the results for each individual person and kind of combine them all together and to give us a, a single measure. That single measure is the pace of aging, but getting it required decades of tracking, which isn't possible in most medical or research settings. So the team turned to DNA methylation as a faster, more scalable solution. It's a change to the way your genes are working that doesn't change your actual DNA sequence. So you can kind of think of it as being like little flags that get stuck on your DNA, um, which sort of tells machinery to turn genes on or off. You can think of it a bit like a volume control, say, for your, for your genes. Those methylation flags respond to what's happening in your body. A smoker, for example, may show signs of faster aging, but if they quit, those patterns can shift. Dunedin Pace can detect that change, capturing decades of biological aging in a single snapshot. It's such a shortcut. We invested decades in building it, but it's not necessary to do that anymore because you have Dunedin Pace. So all you need is that one epigenetic sample, and then you have all the meaning that is in that entire longitudinal study that took decades to do. Everyone can use it in their research. Uh, and that's really, really important for 
um, good science. We need something like this to be, to be able to try and find risk factors that then will go and predict whether someone is going to age faster. Because once we have a risk factor, we can try and intervene on it. Dunedin Pace is already being used in research around the world to test the effects of treating insomnia, quitting smoking, and even changing your diet. But more than that, it gives us a way to study why people age differently and how we might change that. Lifespan is increasing. People are living longer and longer. But what's important is not just that people live more years. What's important is that people live a healthy life for a longer period of time. So the idea really in tackling aging is that what we want to do is not only ensure that we come up with ways to increase lifespan, but that we also come up with ways to increase health span. Years lived in good health. With tools like Dunedin Pace, scientists can do more than just study aging. They can shape the future of health itself.